All right, so this is my automated chemistry lab and vending machine train. I think you guys are gonna like this one. So this is built onto my mega sorter. If you haven't seen the video for my mega sorter, you should probably check that out. It'll help explain a lot of what all this is. Uh, but the new part here is this train line, this control panel, uh, and all these auto arms down the very middle. Uh, so let me just explain what, what we've got here. So we've got a train with five cars and five chemistry labs. Uh, and then the only thing I did to my sorter is I added these four auto arms on a large platform B in front of every output canister. And they go all the way down the middle uh, along this rail that goes down the middle as well. And then I have a control panel here for every resource. And all this does is turn on, I'll just do it for uh, organic here so you can see, all it does is turn on the auto arms at the end of that and turn them off again. And that's it. Uh, so this train, when it runs, it will run to the other end all the way and then it will come all the way back and it will offload and then it will just keep doing that all the way to the end, all the way back and offload. When it offloads, it will either go into my sorter, just feed right back into the sorter and get sorted back into the canisters, uh, or you can use it in vending mode and you can pull it out and have it go into canisters or other storage that you set up on this big platform C right here. Um, so I'm just going to set it up right now to run with rubber, just so we can see how it works. So for rubber, I'm gonna need, as you can see, organic and resin. So if I go over here, if I turn on organic, and I turn on resin and then all I have to do to start it is hit this button here and we're just gonna watch so as you can see as it goes past these auto arms load stuff in now they don't have a 100% accuracy of loading stuff in but it's pretty good and it's all automated so this goes all the way to the end you can see two of those chemistry labs are cooking the other three have only one of two resources but it'll get them on the way back and when it gets to the end it'll come back to this station and the station is set to unload, so it's gonna pull off only the finished product, in this case, rubber. And now the rubber I have set right now to go right back into the sorter, so it's just gonna get sorted around into the respective rubber canister. And that's all this train does. It goes back and forth, and it makes anything you want, uh, and pulls it off and sets it around. Now, when it comes back here, I'm gonna have it stop, and the way I do that is just hitting this button again. So it's gonna wait here, one nice thing is that if I want to switch stuff, the station being on output mode uh, will actually, anything that, that comes off of this chemistry lab will go to the station. So if I just switch this to something else, that just ended up there and that gets sorted just like everything else. Uh, so let's clear these out and then we'll put it in vending mode and we'll just go get some vending of whatever. Alright, so the only thing you need for vending mode is you need one of these chemistry labs to be taken off. And you can put some sort of storage on in its place. I just use these two silos. And I just keep this over here. So with vending mode, any arms that are turned on, in this case I've still got these two on, but let's, let's switch this to something else just to see how it works. Uh, so let's get, I don't know, maybe some iron and some astronium. And we'll switch it to, instead of going back into the sorter, this is going to be out. But this is like if I wanted to take these canisters out and go bring them to another planet or build with them or whatever. Um, and the only reason I don't have more silos on this train as it's running is it's just, it doesn't run slow enough. It gets to the end, it gets all the way back. There's not enough time for it to fill up all this stuff. Uh, so any stuff that I have on, so in this case the iron and the astronium, the arms will load onto this storage. They would load it into here, into the chemistry labs, if they were set to something that needed iron, um, but they shouldn't be. Uh, so it'll just load it onto this main storage here, and we'll just start it again. We'll watch what happens. So it's going to go out just like it did before, except in this time, in this case, those chemistry labs are off, so they're not doing anything. And as it goes past the iron, you can see all four iron just got slapped on there, and the astronium. Also getting stuck on. And we get some iron again on the way home. And then when it gets to the end, the same exact thing's gonna happen where it offloads it, but this time, instead of putting it on the sorting line, it's just gonna move it to this platform, and they're gonna sort directly into these canisters. So we've got, you know, an iron and a starting. So we could just leave this train running as long as we wanted for however much of each resource we wanted to take out. 
and whenever you have enough you just hit this platform or you hit this button again and it turns off the train or stops it from leaving again is really what it does so it comes back offloads and then just sits there and you can adjust it again so there's one big problem with this uh, design and that is when the train is out of about this third post here when it gets out to a certain range it stops rendering every position that it's in it sort of jumps every few seconds from position to position and that will make it skip over auto arms so let me just show you what I'm talking about here if I stay here because I've been following this train every time so it's been in the render distance but see how it stops and then it's gonna jump and then it's gonna jump so the auto arms that are in range of it when it's in one of these frozen positions do work but the problem is it skips over auto arms on the way so the only way that this train works at optimal efficiency is if you either stand in the very middle of this order or what I do you just ride the train you just AFK and ride the train um, but you can make it work in a less efficient way uh, by simply just taking off the engine from the front of it so it moves a little slower and then every time it jumps it should still be within range for some of the chemistry labs to hit some of the, the auto arms of every resource um, so I'll just show you what that looks like here if it's slower obviously it still has the storage on it and the chemistry labs aren't on but you can see it moves way slower right so when we get out of range of it here it's gonna skip it's gonna skip in a much more controlled sort of limited way you know one train length at a time more or less so it does work in this circumstance but it will not be as efficient not as many auto arms are gonna connect with what they're trying to aim at because it won't move smoothly past it um, so you can either use it this way slightly less efficiently and go do st other stuff or you can just sit in the train at afk while it either collects your materials or does chemistry for you so that's all pretty cool uh, so i just want to show you a more advanced demo here we're going to do a full nanocarbon cook uh, from all the base ingredients um, and since we have five chemistry labs, we can do all five steps that are needed. So we'll just take off this, set it all back here, and we'll set this up. So we need hydrazine, and then we need graphene. Steel, titanium, alloy, and finally, nanocarbon alloy. So, the way this is going to work is actually pretty interesting. All of the connected cars count as a single platform for most automation purposes. So, for example, when the hydrazine is done being cooked, it will actually, if there's a space available, go right into the chemistry lab for the graphene and you don't need to necessarily pick up a hydrazine from the sorting line in order to put it on the chemistry lab for the graphene so depending on how the timing works out they'll either feed into each other or if there's already a cook going on here because it did pick up hydrazine it'll just wait here and either feed in as soon as it's available or if it gets back to the station first it'll offload it so this is going to offload everything not just nanocarbon if i only wanted nanocarbon i would probably switch all of these to nanocarbon and just pull the resources i need uh, but this is going to offload any uh, possible option of the constituent materials of nanocarbon. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to turn on the right resources. That's right. So, we're going to need carbon, graphite, ammonium, steel, titanium... Uh, we're going to need helium, argon, nitrogen, and hydrogen. And I think, I think that's everything, but we're going to turn on the already made materials as well. So we'll turn on graphene, hydrazine, steel, titanium alloy. So it will be able to load things up even if there hasn't been one cooked. Uh, and now this time when it gets back... I'm gonna put the 
engine back on it, and then we'll just watch it cook some nanocarbon. And that's pretty much it. So this is the automated way of having your chemistry lab go to your resources instead of having your resources go to your chemistry lab. All right, let's check it out. Actually, you know what? I'll just fly next to it so it's easier. Here we go. So you can see all these different things are cooking up. I don't actually have any pre-cooked titanium alloys, so this final ingredient won't work until that first titanium alloy comes out. So you can see now the nanocarbon is cooking. And everything else is also intermittently cooking as well as it runs past the necessary materials that it needs to get going. So you could AFK if you took the engine off so it was smoothing a little slower and it would still cook nanocarbon just fine. Uh, but you could also ride the train AFK and it would be much more efficient because it would be moving quite a bit quicker. All of these different chemistry stations would be running a lot more often. So, your call. But uh, this is the only way I was able to get it to work. If anyone from System Era is watching this video, please make it so trains will load smoothly from a farther distance. I just want to go this far, you know? Just, just that far. And this whole thing would be perfect. But instead, it only goes about halfway. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's it. Let me know what you guys think.